We're talking about Mark 11:24, where Jesus said, Whatever things you desire or ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Very powerful, very simple, but yet so applicable for us. This kind of praying is not like the prayer, for instance, of dedication and consecration. Both these prayers are important, but when I pray the prayer of dedication and consecration, I'm saying, as Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. We're familiar with that prayer, and sadly, a lot of people don't know that it only needs to be prayed in that one area, the area of consecrating and dedicating to God's purpose. A lot of people think they should pray every prayer that way, but that's not true. If I'm going to pray the prayer of faith, I don't come at that not knowing the will of God. I pray the prayer of faith based on what I know to be the will of God. I'm not looking for an answer in this kind of prayer. I'm praying my answer. You see, if I'm seeking God about direction, for instance, and I, I don't know what to do about a situation or something that's coming up, well, then I'm going to seek the Lord. And that's a biblical term. And that's a kind of prayer. But once I find his will or know his will, then I'm no longer seeking. And I don't have to say, if it be thy will. I begin to then pray that prayer based on what I know to be his will. And you might say, well, why is that so important? Because faith begins where the will of God is known. I can't believe God for anything that I don't know to be his will. So how can I know his will? What's my foundation for successfully praying the Mark eleven twenty four 24 prayer? Well, it's to find the scriptures that cover what I'm praying for. Find scriptures that show proof that the thing that I'm going to pray about is indeed God's will for my life. You know, if my desire or what I think I need isn't covered in scriptures or scriptural principles, then I don't have any business with it. So that means I can't use Mark eleven twenty four 24 and just glibly pray some unscriptural prayer. I can't pray that God would just give me your house or that God would give me somebody else's wife or that God would, you know, do something that's a, totally out of his character and out of his his, uh, his being. I can't ask for that in faith because I can't find any scriptures to cover it. But for instance, if my body is not functioning correctly, I do have the right to look to the Word to see what God said about health and healing. And when I look to the Word, I find a lot about it. And I, I find tons of proof, if I can use that cliche, that make me know that God is a healer and He wants me well. So then I began to base this prayer I'm going to pray. And notice I haven't prayed it yet. We, we're on the third lesson and third week of this series, and we're still not talking about the actual prayer. We're talking about preparing for praying. And that, that brings up something I think that's very, very important for believers to understand. Sometimes we pray too quickly. Now, I know we're to pray without ceasing. But as I said, there are different kinds of prayer. This prayer is a prayer you want to be prepared for. And the main preparation for praying the prayer of faith is to be in faith. And the only way to be in faith is to be hearing the Word of God. And so find scriptures in your Bible that cover what you want or need. Write them down if you need to. Find them, repeat them, say them. Make sure that you believe what God said. Now, your body may tell you something else. Your checkbook may tell you something else. The circumstances you're looking at might be totally different from what you're reading in the Bible. But God's Word is true. And these other things, well, they're just subject to change because all natural things and natural circumstances are subject to the spiritual power of God's Holy Word.